So 13 hours ago, basically RimWorld's new expansion launched. I completely agree with this guy's comment. This guy, Oscar Potoki, who makes amazing mods, by the way. He's got 53 mods on his Steam Workshop page, and a lot of these are pretty huge in terms of being able to change around the gameplay experience. I really don't know why this guy is not employed by Ludian Studios or why they don't pay him some kind of contractor salary or something, because people like this guy just completely carry the game. So I'm going to go over the mod real quick, and my goal actually is to make a series based on this mod. I do have another one going on, and I was planning on that one having two more episodes. However, since this mod launched today, I'm just going to do a grand finale on my other series, and then I'm going to start over fresh and just delve into this mod more deeply. So what I like about this mod and what this guy's done here is it's very thematic. Like there's even a new storyteller, Empress Evil. Essentially with her, no good events can happen ever. The only good events are ones that can come back and bite you, meteors, relationships, etc. There's also a bunch of new quest rewards and a racer that will erase everything in a radius of 10 from existence, including the user. That's interesting. There's there's also a shield belt, which is already one in the game. Apparently it has a really large capacity, but it cannot recharge. There's a teleporter that can transport 500 kg of mass from one place to another. An animal tamer that can apparently tame an animal, like a thrumbo. A pacifier that can make someone join our faction. That's pretty cool. The magic mod I play with already has something like this, but I like this mechanic. It is very strong, but when you're playing on the hardest difficulty, the odds are often against you in a lot of situations. There's also the insanity warhead that will release a strong psychic drone, sending all animals and humanoids into a berserk rage. So I'm guessing you can just fire this on an enemy colony and that will pretty much wipe them out. We got a lot of new guns here. A plasma cutter is apparently a mining pistol. And what I'm wondering is if this will increase mining speed. There's also this plasma saw, which looks pretty cool. It's like a chainsaw, which lights people on fire, I guess. They also got some new gear, some riot gear that is good against blunt trauma. And I'm guessing that's going to be good against a lot of the insects. Although I thought a lot of the insects do like stabbing things, like they have sharp pincers and stuff. Or maybe this riot gear doesn't actually go with the theme and maybe it's just used for being able to beat down some of your colonists that have mental breaks and they go berserk or something because yeah they got the right helmet and the right shield that's also good against blunt like fist damage and stuff there's a new plant this armor licks that apparently when fully matured releases a light that's bright enough to grow other crops around it and this is actually really cool because there's events that will take off sunlight and also i believe this allows you to grow crops indoors when you have like toxic fallout the only other way to grow crops inside without mods is you have to have a sun lamp and that thing is really annoying to power it takes 2900 watts of power which is just an insane amount so these are going to be really strong there's also this new item royal jelly and apparently it will boost immunity of anyone that has it i'm wondering if like that means if someone's sick it will just make them get over their sickness quicker or does that give them like an immunity to all diseases i'm not really sure also apparently if someone does become addicted to it and they get withdrawals if you let them go into full withdrawal they can transform into a mega spider that would be very suck if the mega spider doesn't have like the stats that the colonists had but if the mega spider had like all of the colonist stats and they were just like a improved version of them that would be pretty cool there's some new insectoid chitin that could be gotten from i guess butchering up insects and you can use it in armors weapons and structures and then there's some really beautiful spider silk that apparently doesn't offer much protection but it multiplies the beauty of items by four so you're going to want to make i don't know like an armchair out of this and it would boost the beauty in the room by quite a lot there's also apparently insect milk i'm guessing that's not going to be too tasty and insect eggs that can apparently be eaten and it says these items are only produced by vat grown insects which I'm guessing has something to do with this feature bioengineering. This is where the mod gets really cool. Players are able to purchase genomes extracted from a variety of different animals and use them to incubate a range of unique insectoids to help work and defend the colony. Different combos of genomes can yield different types of new insectoids. However, there's a chance of the insectoid coming out rabid, sick, dead, or worse. And apparently you can only get genomes in the incubator from the trader or quest rewards. There's also this structure, which I think is so cool. The sonic infestation repeller. And I think there's actually kind of a type here it says that it significantly removes the infestation risk so does it remove it or does it make it really small i think he meant while it essentially removes the infestation risk it enrages the insectoid empress and can lead to more powerful insectoid herds arriving at the colony the reason why this thing is so cool is because if you build your base in a mountain insects will spawn just kind of randomly inside your base it's not fully random there is like formulas and stuff but essentially if you build inside a mountain there is a pretty good chance that you're going to get infestations inside your base with this thing though yeah you are going to get raided by insects more often but they're not going to be from within your base. They're going to be going through your main kill box choke point areas. So yeah, I think this is a really cool addition. Not only does it fix the issue, but it does add a trade off of getting raided more. Then we got a ton of new insects. Like there's just so many insects and I'm not going to go over these right now, but like this guy put in so much work here. Like it's actually just amazing. There's actually a few I kind of want to go over. So the spider weaver does yield 20 spider silk every three days. The princess will make insect jelly every day. That's really cool. And will also make unfertilized insectoid eggs every day. The 
royal maggot will yield royal insect jelly every day, but will also leave a trail of disgusting slimes. So you're gonna have to wipe up after it. I like that trade off. And then you got the gigawig, which will dig out stone or valuable metals periodically. So yeah, we got a mining insect here. Unfortunately, I looked over all the insects. You don't have any like super big brain ones that can do research for your colony. At least not yet. Maybe that's coming in some kind of added on DLC. But we got like the worker ant, which can haul resources around the base. That's really helpful. And the mega cricket can actually harvest fully grown crops. That is super cool. We also got the cuter pillar, which is apparently very valuable on the market and will constantly nuzzle. Usually animals only will nuzzle like once a day and it's pretty underwhelming. Speaking of nuzzling, I think they also buffed that in one of the newest patches for the base game. They buffed how often animals will nuzzle, but maybe this thing is just gonna be a nuzzling machine. It's just gonna be running around the base, just hopping all over people and just nuzzling them in the neck and stuff. Down here, we got a bunch of new raid methods. Like this one, sappers, they will dig around your defenses, which is gonna be a nerf to mountains, but mountains are extremely strong. And by the way, with that new item I talked about earlier, they are also buffing mountains by making it so you can't get infestations to spawn inside of them. So this is kind of a way to balance that out. I think that's pretty smart. We got an immediate attack tunnels. This one's going to be kind of annoying. They can just tunnel under your base and attack you from underneath the base. I wonder if like 50 insects are going to be just digging up right in the middle of your base though. That would be kind of annoying. There's also a siege burrows. This one's kind of interesting. The insects will tunnel into your base with endless waves, but you can destroy their burrows and that will stop them. Now this is again where I feel like this is actually like a real expansion. There's some really huge features right here. On the map, you'll run into overrun outposts and these are bases that have been overrun by insects and there's valuable goods inside of them. There's also a new event, infested ships, and apparently they're gonna crash around your base and they're just loaded up with insects. We also got a new event, giant infestation, as if infestations were not enough. It happens apparently very rarely and it will spawn primarily outside your base and use new large hives to spawn megapedes, royal mega spiders, and giga locusts, and even insectoid queens. It should be dealt with very quickly as this infestation can quickly get out of control. And then finally, we got a new scenario start, mercenaries, which I might actually start with this one. Your base has been overrun with giant insects. Forced to escape, you approach a small outpost crawling with insects. You have sent you on the run in the first place. You can exterminate them and settle inside the outpost, or you can leave and start new. I really like that start, actually. It gets you right into the action. That's pretty cool. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the mod. I think this mod is just insane. I really think it's a travesty that it's not like some added on DLC. So the mod creator could actually get some kind of reward for all of his hard work. Even if it's just like five bucks, at least he's getting something. And I really think that's the direction that Rimworld should go. They should start promoting the mod creators and actually rewarding them because that would incentivize mod creators to come out with stuff like this more often. And I know like a lot of people are gonna be like, oh dude, I don't wanna pay for it, but you paid 20 bucks for the royalty expansion. And I genuinely think that the royalty expansion did not offer as much content as this mod. And I mean, to each their own, a lot of people do probably like the royalty expansion and I'm doing kind of a pretty heavily modded playthrough. And so a lot of the features in royalty, like psychic powers, for example, just seem really lackluster compared to some of my mods features. And maybe the mods I'm using are too broken. Personally, I'm just not a fan of a lot of royalties features. Although I will say that quest system does feel pretty nice the way they did change around quests. And then there's mech clusters, which I feel like you're going to be either really for these or really against them. They definitely up the difficulty quite a bit and they make you kind of come out of your base and challenge the mechs head on. And if you're not ready for it, then it can be kind of the end of your game. So I don't know. I'm not really for them or against them. If I had to put a price on it, just at a glance from what I'm seeing, I would say the royalty expansion is worth like five bucks and this insectoid one is worth 10. I think there's just so much more interesting content in this insectoids mod, which again, that's just my opinion. I'm not a vanilla player and I also do have a YouTube channel and the more crazier stuff tends to get more views. So maybe I'm a bit biased there. I don't know. But yeah, anyways, I'm definitely going to be subscribing to this mod and I have learned a lot from my last series. So going into this next one, I will still be using a lot of the mods from my last playthrough, but I'll be changing up the way I do things quite a bit. And so yeah, anyways, if you guys got through the video, I want to thank you all for watching. Drop a like if you're liking the Rimworld content and I will see you in my Jungle Tribe series finale, or I'll see you at the start of this insect series. On a side note, and for those of you guys who've been following my channel for a while, you know I never do this. I'm like, I don't have a Patreon. I don't promote anyone's Patreon or anything usually, but this guy does have a Patreon. And I feel like since I am benefiting from his mod, I'm gonna join the J tier, which apparently there's only one left for 15 bucks a month. I'm just gonna be doing like a one-time $15 thing. But I would suggest if you're like really a fan of his mods and really a fan of his content, just throw him like a dollar. You don't have to. And I'm not someone that should be telling people what to do. As like I said, I am making YouTube videos on this stuff and I'm getting benefit. But for me as someone that's making content based on this guy's hard work, I feel like I have a responsibility to throw him 15. So yeah, apparently the J tier is now sold out. Sorry guys for any guys who are trying to be J tier. And like I said, I'm not trying to pressure anyone to pay for his content. I do really wish though that Ludion would work with guys like this and figure out ways to implement their content as DLC, especially because this guy has such a long history of constantly updating his mods. And like I was actually looking over his workshop page and I want to say most of his mods that I'm looking at, they're all kept up to date. Like that's actually crazy. I don't know how much work that 
that takes to constantly be updating all of these 53 mods to make sure like they don't conflict with the new royalty content. But yeah, the guy just puts in so much work and I thought I'd just shout out his Patreon. I feel like it's the least I could do. Anyways, guys, all that I ask from you is just to like the video. And with that, thank you all for watching. I will see you in the next one.